It's never been easier than it is in 2025 to access Betaflight. We've got a multitude of options out there so that you can access it pretty much anytime and any place. But what I realized last week during a live stream is that a lot of people are not aware of what these options are. So I figured after having that live stream and people requesting probably the most requested video, that I'd make this video now and I'll show you guys how you can access Betaflight in ways that you might be a little bit surprised by. Probably not going to be a massively long video, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this camera to that rigging over there so it can be top down. We'll set it up on the PC and we'll go through all that. Now, you're not going to see all that, but what I've just done there is I've given you the opportunity to go away, grab yourself some drinks, grab yourself some snacks, settle down, and let's just chill and find out how, as a newbie, you're going to navigate this new beta flight world that you found yourself brought into because you want to fly one of these really cool. Hang on. One of these really cool FPV drones. Let's freaking go. And the first thing now that we're going to want to do is move over to our PC. Now, I know a lot of you guys uh, are great at flying, but a lot of you are a little bit nervous about doing PC stuff um, and you don't think that you can do this. And we're going to talk you through it and it's, I'm going to make it really simple for you. So the first thing I want you to do is obviously go to your search engine of your choice. Mine would be Google and type in Betaflight Download. Now, it'll bring you to this page, betaflight.com slash downloads. And in here... We've got maybe one day one of my videos. Hey, fingers crossed, guys. In here, we're looking for the Betaflight configurator. So if we now click on download the latest, and that will then take us to another page. Now, this is where people do get a little bit confused, okay? If we just scroll down the GitHub page, uh, keep going. Now then, we've got assets, and this is what we're looking for. So if we have a look at them, we'll explain them just to make it that a little bit easier for you. Now, this particular one here looks as Betaflight Configurator 10.10 Android APK. And that's right, you can access Betaflight on your Android phone. Now, we're going to come to that in a short while. You've got the different versions of Windows and things. But again, to make it really, really simple for the ones that should work on almost all of them, we can look at either the Mac DMG or we can look at the Win64 installer. Now, I'm on Windows, so that's the one I'm going to click. And if we look in the top right over here, we can see it's now downloading. I do have a one in a bracket after it because I've already installed it and downloaded it, but I've actually deleted it for this video. Once it's downloaded, if you just click on that, it will take you to your downloads. And then you can hit install. And then you just follow through. So you accept that agreement. I'd let it install to wherever it wants to install to personally, unless you are specifically wanting it on a different drive, etc. But if you are, then you're going to know this anyway. And now it says start beta flight configurator and finish. So hit finish and it will automatically now pop up. My advice to you is when it's in the position that it's in now, if you right click on it here and pin to taskbar and then that way, if you close it down, you don't have to go and search for the icon. It's right there on the taskbar. Simple as that. Now, let me turn the overhead camera on. Because we'll go through a couple of things with that as well. Now, depending what type of flight controller you've got, depends on what type of cable you've got. This is a micro USB one. And we're going to find the micro USB by just turning the flight controller around. And hopefully you can see it. it's in there. I'm going to need a micro USB cable to plug in now. The reason I'm not a massive fan of micro USB cables is you'll need a specific data cable. And what a lot of people have hanging around the house is just a micro USB charging cable. And that won't work. However, we can see now we've plugged it in and we've got an error. And the reason we've got an error is because this particular quad is actually running Betaflight 4.6 or... 2025.12 and that needs a different way of accessing Betaflight and I'm going to show you that now. Now unfortunately and perhaps maybe a little bit unhelpfully it doesn't actually tell you on here how to access this but you're going to need to access the new version of the configurator and we do that by going to I think it's app 
dot beta flight dot com and you can see now so we're in chrome so we're in an internet browser that we've typed that into and we've actually now got as you can see here a version of beta flight in that web browser now you can download it to your pc and stuff but for now we're just going to do the easy way and to connect to this you want to click on i can't find my usb it'll pop up with your beta flight one click connect and then click connect and you're now into the beta flight configurator as you would be with the older versions now this this is only if you receive a quad that has a newer version of beta flight already installed uh, some manufacturers do ship them with a newer version. Most manufacturers don't, and you can use the standard configurator. But if you ever get that error message, this is how you do it. And again, just running through it really quickly, all of the ports, there's a few things that's just move places slightly. But generally speaking, if you can understand the normal version, if you like, of Betaflight Configurator, you'll be able to get yourself through this without any problems whatsoever. So app.betaflight.com for the pre-released, the beta versions of Betaflight, if you like. And it has a CLI and you can update and everything through here. But you don't need to use it unless you're on the very newest version. Okay, let's move back in to the older version for a second. And the only quad I've got to hand is the currently redacted drone. So I can't actually put it on the table. However... Oh, actually, this could be dangerous. You guys could actually spot something in here. But if we go to the normal configurator, it then tells me... I just need to make sure we haven't got anything identifying it in here. I don't think we do. No, we don't. Okay, brilliant. Although you can see the board type, which may or may not give it away. Who knows? Okay, so... Once you're then in this version of Betaflight, again, everything down the side is exactly how you would expect it to be. If we just disconnect for a second, if you're ever having trouble connecting or upgrading, you can actually see here, it tells you for legacy hardware, that here are your drivers to download. And you can actually click on that and it will take you to that website. Now, generally speaking, it's not a massive issue for more modern PCs, which have got all the drivers and everything updated. But you've got the impulse driver RC fixer as well. And we'll have a look at why that's important in a second. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it with this quad, but yeah. What will generally happen and why you would generally need the impulse one. So essentially... Let me let me rewind a second. So the way these are these all work is the CP10X, sorry, the CP210X drivers are generally for your connection. If you have any issues connecting, that's the one to use. Um the, the next one again can help if you're having issues connecting your USB, but again, it's not really needed like it was back in the olden days. And then the Impulse RC driver fixer is when your board needs to go into DFU mode and it isn't doing it. And DFU mode is when you update your firmware. So we'll just have a quick look at that just very quickly. And what would generally happen is you would select your board, you would build it, and then down here you would get an error. Now, I can't recreate that error at the moment with the quad that I've got, but I'll, I'll, if I can try and find some hardware, I'll put a shorts version up of, of what it will look like. But it basically says error, unable to enter DFU or, or something along those lines. I haven't had it for a while, so I'm not 100% sure of the exact wording. However, if you ever get that, all you need to do, go back onto the welcome page, click on impulse driver fixer, and then it's here, Impulse RC Driver Fixer. Click on that and it'll download it. And you don't have to install it or anything if you just open file and it will run. And that will then put your flight controller into bootloader, into DFU mode. Now, if we go back into beta flight, we can see now, look, it's put it into DFU mode. So we can now flash this board. Sometimes you can press a button on your flight controller, but sometimes you can't access that button, especially if it's like a five inch with side panels and or even a seven inch or whatever. So it's good to have this, but it's not massively needed in 2025. But the options are there if you struggle, especially if you can't get it to connect 
this is what you need to do. Now, you might be saying to yourself, and I have jumped around a little bit here, so I do forgive me, but you might be saying to yourself, well, how do I know if I can get it to connect or not? Let me just unplug and replug this in. Uh, let's pretend I've just plugged this in. And we'll get rid of this. Right. So how do I know if it's not going to connect? Up here, you can see it says COM port 3. And if you do a drop down, it says manual selection. Now, if your flight controller isn't automatically connecting after you've put your USB cable in, it will say manual selection. Okay. If you then click on it and there's an option, a COM option, it means there's a way to, to do it. If you haven't got that COM option, it means one of two things. And it, again, this is where people do get quite confused and, and can sort of get themselves tied up in riddles. It's either that you need the CP210X drivers downloading from here, or it's that the cable you're using is not a data cable. Or the port that you've plugged in doesn't work on the, on the PC that you're using. I've had all of these things happen. I've actually got a brand new cable specifically for micro USB. This is a micro USB quad. And I've actually got a specifically brand new cable for this because all of the other cables I've got in my house, I've got one cable that's that long. Hang on, that's that long, which is no good now. I've got a PC that's not sat on the desk. And all the other cables are just power cables and they don't put data through them. So I wasn't able to actually connect. So... If you need advice on, on buying cables and stuff, I'm quite happy to just drop a comment in the comments down below and let me know. But that is how you would access the standard configurator of Betaflight, and that is how you would access the uh, configurator of Betaflight that's based on the web page in order to run the more up-to-date or the more development-based versions. So once 4.6 or 20, 25.12 launches... That will then be in this version that you can see on the screen now. And then 2026.6 or 4.7, as we would have called it, will then be on app.betaflight.com. Just very quickly, if you did want to update your hardware, easiest way is to come into update firmware, press auto detect, and then you can select what it will be set to initially is release versions. So it will tell you the most up-to-date version that you can install, which is um, 4.5.2, which is from March of 2025. If you then wanted to try the new features of a new version of Betaflight like 4.6 with the altitude and the position hold, you would change this option here from release to development. Again, hit auto detect and you can now see 2025.12, which is Beta Flight 4.6, as we've all been calling it for the past year, right there. And that's how you would update it. You then need to put in which options you want. And if you did want altitude hold, you do need to specifically, and position hold, you do need to specifically add them as options in here. So just bear that in mind as well. Now, this is wrong because it's set to brushed. It should be set to D-shot. I'm not actually sure why all these a set like that but again just bear that in mind you will need to look at this if you're running elrs or tbs crossfire you need to make sure your radio protocol is set to crsf if you're running the dji system so with the dji controller you would set it to s bus if you've got black bars in your receiver tab that means you've got the wrong one selected in here and that's how you access Betaflight. But that's not just how you access Betaflight, because we've got some really nice goodies to show you that will allow you to do it when you're not stuck in a studio like this. Let's go on. By far the best way to access Betaflight, in my opinion, when you're not stuck in a studio, is using the Android app version. So what you're going to do first of all is you're going to go to that web page that we looked at before, betaflight.com forward slash downloads. Go to the latest configurator and in that list you're going to download the android.apk version. Once you've got the android.apk version, install it to your phone and then away you go. Now, once you plug your flight controller in, you need a USB-C to USB-C or a USB-C to micro USB depending on what your flight controller is, you'll get this message. And I'm going to put always... Um, what is it? Always open beta flight configurator default build when this is connected and press OK. 
So I don't even now need to go and search for it. It's literally there for me. Now, I know a lot of you guys know about the Speedy B version of a mobile version of Betaflight. Now, the Speedy B version, don't get me wrong, I have no issues with whatsoever. However, if you're going to do it, use the official version because it just makes a lot more sense. And then once you're actually in here, you can see essentially it is exactly the same interface as what you've got on the PC version, on the Mac version, so on and so forth. So the Speed of B version is great and it works via Bluetooth and you can also use it with a USB, but it does have a slightly different layout. And ultimately, if you're going to be doing something like configuring your quad in the field, in my opinion, you're going to want to be using the actual official thing. Uh, one, it makes it easier to navigate because everything's in the same place, whereas on the Speedy B, it is in slightly different places. But two, it's good to know that you're actually using the right thing and that it's going to work exactly as you expect and how it should work. And that is, in my opinion, probably the number one accessory to have as a drone pilot in 2025. To be able to be in the field and literally connect, I've got no lipo on, so it's literally just this USB cable and I've got access to full beta flight. I can change my rates, I can change my pitch tune, I can change my OSD. There, there's nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that you can't do on this mobile version that you can do on the full featured version. And that is the beta flight version of Android. There isn't, unfortunately, a iOS version, but uh, that is what it is. You can use the Speedy B version if you... Uh, if you so desire on iOS 